Hello and welcome to the Chris Pagentine Basketball Network. In this video, I'm going to be explaining my three pillars of networking for basketball players seeking opportunities at any level. Stay tuned for more. And before we dive into my three pillars of networking, I want to give a huge shout out to Onto the Next Apparel for sponsoring this video. You can find them at OTTN Apparel on Instagram. I'll leave links in the description below to their Instagram account and their online shop. OTTN exemplifies lifestyle and basketball culture. Check them out. Our first and lengthiest pillar for networking is relationship building. How do we build a relationship? Okay, first we're going to talk about listening to others. President Hoover said, no one ever listened themselves out of a job. All right, this means pay attention to the details and advice within a conversation if you're lucky enough to be talking to somebody in your industry. A lot of times when I'm posting jobs or opportunities, I give specific details, and you'll find this with anybody else who posts opportunities, they give specific details with how they want somebody to go about applying for that position. Okay, this is for a reason. This is either because that's what the team or, or a representative wants, or because that person is going to be so overwhelmed with applicants that it's an easier way to funnel through them. Okay, and if you do not listen and follow directions, your application is most likely going to be thrown out instantly without even being reviewed. Don't comment on posts saying, I'm interested, DM me. Nobody's going to chase you down, okay? You want that position, all right? They're not going to chase you for it. They, they have the opportunity. You want it. You go for it. Seek mentorship. This is a great way to build relationships. As you expand your network, look for opportunities to shadow, volunteer, or work for people in the basketball industry that have a lot of valuable knowledge to give, okay? And then do your best to learn from that. All right, there's, there's a huge myth out there, this self-made myth, okay? And I'm calling it a myth because I know there are a lot of people that came up through the mud, they, they, they went through the struggle, they made a lot of it themselves when nothing, not a lot was given to them, okay? But you have to look at it this way. Somebody came along and did something for you to be where you're at, okay? Even from the very simplistic view of if you're a basketball player, you love the game, somebody had to come along and create the game, right? Dr. James Naismith, a Canadian, invented the game in Massachusetts at a YMCA, right? So if he didn't do that, you, you, we may have never heard of basketball at this point, okay? So somewhere along the line, somebody's given you an opportunity that maybe you don't even know about, okay? So there's no such thing as self-made. Seek mentorship, seek advice and seek opportunities to learn from people who are are in positions that you want to be in or who have the opportunities that you want to gain okay next within relationship building is common courtesy and respect okay this sounds simple but but it is humongous and it goes a long way and it's something that is sometimes rarely seen especially within basketball within messaging within networking from from young players okay saying thank you all right is, is humongous and, and also saying, hello, coach, so-and-so, in their last name, or hi, mister, hi, missus, okay? Those things are huge, showing that you know how to act and you have respect, all right? Consideration and appreciation is absolutely a tremendously huge relationship builder, okay? The opposite is also true of being disrespectful, not showing consideration, and being unappreciative, okay? That is a relationship killer. I get messages all the time from people that say, what's up, bro? Uh, you know, things along that line that are not, they, they don't show much respect. They don't show a lot of common courtesy on that person's end. And it's very off-putting, especially to a, a person who is a professional or somebody who is much older than you in, in, in the game. Someone helping you achieve your goal is a choice that they make, okay? Now, they may not be able to handpick you. It's, it's not that. Like, they want you to fail or, or succeed necessarily, okay? But, but giving you the help and opening up their network and, and, uh, and passing your information along maybe for an opportunity or even extending you to somebody that they've worked very hard to build that relationship with, okay, that is a choice, all right? And then it needs to be off of either a genuine relationship that you've built or in the case of an agent where they can make some compensation from a signing, okay? And then there needs to be the knowledge that you have a need, okay? So that's communicating that need, and also that you have the ability to 
accomplish what your goals are. All right, that's in, that's in your basketball abilities. Nobody wants to tarnish their reputation. People work very hard to build up their network and they don't want to ruin that by recommending somebody giving a bad reference. So if you're not portraying yourself in the correct light, nobody's going to want to extend themselves because you're looking like a liability. Consistent communication. Maintaining communication even when not in need of assistance. Okay, This shows that you care about your connections and keeps you fresh in their mind in case that an opportunity may arise. Okay, 10% of networking is showing up. The other 90% is following up. Do not wait more than 24 hours to make contact when you see a job opening uh, or, or after making a connection with a coach or somebody that, that you want to gain an opportunity from or you want to make sure that you build that relationship with, okay? Because timing is everything, especially in basketball. It's not like there's posted a, an opportunity like a normal job. If this is a playing job, this thing may be available for a number of hours, for only a number of days, okay. So if you're a, if you see a post that's been a month and you're and and you're just now getting your materials together and and trying to send it on, that's way 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 too late, okay. There's there's an element of luck and, and an element of timing in getting your materials across, and you normally want to send materials within the first few hours of seeing a, a, an opening. Real relationships are built one by one, okay. I don't recommend mass contacting at all okay for any level it's very impersonal and it'll also like if you're sending these emails they can be sent directly to a spam account okay and it doesn't show an investment in that program or or in that coach and and therefore how can you expect them to make an investment in you and connect with many different people in that industry okay don't just seek out coaches all right go for it. if you're looking for a college opportunity go for athletic directors, head and assistant coaches, okay? At the pro level, team managers, team owners are great people to connect with, okay? Even former coaches. Maybe if they're not coaching anymore, they have more time, more opportunity to help you, okay? And they also have a lot more connections than you probably and can open up their network and try to help you find the best fit. Whereas if they're a coach of a current team, they may have their roster full, especially with import players, not be looking and also not be looking to strengthen other teams' rosters. Provide mutual value in the long term, okay? It's not about what you can get in the immediate, but what you can bring to the table, okay? I've cultivated relationships for two, five, ten plus years before ever seeing anything come of it, okay? And not expecting to do so. You need to cultivate relationships based on a pure interest in, in, in mutuality in that industry. Mutual benefit can be giving referrals, can be, can be giving useful information, can be recommending maybe other players if you don't fit the description, they're looking for a post player, you're a guard, okay? It could also be adding value like we said earlier about being seeking mentorship, okay? Volunteering for something, getting involved with their training. If you're looking for an opportunity to play, you may also present the fact that you can coach, you can train youth players, and here's an example of that. I've got video, I've got my resume. Show that you can add more value and you're not just taking from a situation. Which, which it also shows that you're a team player, you're not selfish, you're somebody who's trustworthy, okay? And, and a coach especially wants to bring in players that they know that they can trust in a, in a, a multitude of situations. The second pillar of networking is professionalism, okay? To be a pro, you must conduct yourself like a pro, okay? Take ownership and personal accountability, all right? Now, for on the younger side, if you're seeking maybe prep school or college opportunities, I, I, I pray not at the professional level, do not use your parents to make connections for you, okay? Especially pro, but college coaches hate this, all right? They, they, they start to wonder who wants the recruitment more, okay? They want to talk to you because at the end of the day, you're going to be the one potentially on the team, okay? Not your parent. And if your parent is doing this stuff for you as, as a 17, 18 year old, that's a problem. Being a professional is not about how you are treated and perceived by others. It's about how you treat and interact with other people. This is especially important during the moments when you are not treated well, okay? What you do, what you say, says more about you 
than it does the other person, okay? People will see what happens if, if it's in a, in a public setting, okay? They'll see and be able to judge that that person's in the wrong, okay? And then, but how you act is all about you. You can't control somebody else's actions, but then what you in turn say and what you in turn do is a direct ref reflection on you and your character and your professionalism, and that's what you can control. Don't get baited into making a reaction when you control your reaction, your attitude, your mood, everything. Build a positive reputation by consistently proving your worth, okay? The moment you're more trouble than you're worth is the moment you're not going to be around very long, okay? A positive reputation is everything, and you can't be afraid of proving yourself. Every single day, every single moment you're proving yourself. Please exercise caution when using social media. And remember, you are a brand, okay? You may not have a business, but you are a personal brand. With every single action or every single post, whatever you do online, whatever you do in person, you are either enhancing that brand or diminishing it. Make yourself available. Be prompt in returning phone calls, texts, or email. Take the initiative in doing these things as well. My third and final pillar of networking is success in preparation. Do your research. Approach every interaction as a networking opportunity, okay? Again, you are constantly proving your worth and your value, and you can't be offended by that. It, it's the truth. You are constantly going to be judged, especially when you're looking for some sort of basketball employment, especially as a player or as an opportunity for a scholarship or making a team. They're called tryouts for a reason, okay? You're, you're being put in a situation where you're going to be evaluated based upon everything, how you conduct yourself, how you act, not just your play as well, okay? And these things matter. Be organized and have your materials ready and on hand, okay? Resume, highlights, full game film, profile links, stats, and references are all necessary materials no matter what the level is that you're trying to gain an opportunity. Network intentionally, okay? Networking without a purpose and a strategy will not help you achieve your goals, all right? Let me explain what I mean by that. If you're just going through your social media, kind of wandering aimlessly through it, like you're going through the desert searching for water, it, you're, you're gonna end up making mistakes because you're gonna reach out to people, maybe you're gonna reach out to them too soon, uh, maybe you're gonna reach out to the wrong people. What I suggest is you build a contact log. Go through your contacts, make sure that you're reaching out to people that, that are people that can give opportunities, all right? And make a little spreadsheet of that, all right? Their name, their position, maybe links to, to uh, their social media where you're connected or their contact information that you have that they've, they've accepted and, and given to you, all right? And then make little notes about when you contacted them and what was said, all right? This is how you can stay organized, all right? And check in at a timely manner, all right? And make sure that you get through your contacts and contact everybody and that you're not missing out on a potential opportunity that you could have had. This is a great time that we're in right now. The holidays are a perfect time for networking, okay? Because you can drop a message without having to ask for anything and you plant that little seed of building up your network, okay? All you gotta do is reach out and say, you know, hey, how you doing, coach? I hope you and your family have a very happy and healthy holiday season. Something like that, real quick. It's not asking for something. It's not a long, lengthy message. It's showing some personal investment in that person, and that's how you start to grow a relationship and a real contact. Okay, and, and, and part of doing your homework is also getting recommendations from people you know. I guarantee you, you, you probably have grown up knowing some players that achieved the things that you wanted to do, or some coaches that you have that in their previous life as a player, they did what you wanted to do. Don't be too proud to seek help. Okay, reach out for that and try to, again, it was like our seek mentorship, try to gain as much knowledge and value that you can and do it in a way where, again, you're making a genuine connection and not just trying to soak up information uh, selfishly because people know, they can read, okay, you have instincts, they can read, you, you know, a lot of young people think that they're so smart and they have everything figured out and just because somebody doesn't outwardly show something and know what you're, and show that they know what you're doing, it doesn't mean they don't. It means that their people skills and networking skills are much better than yours and they've already canceled you out without even explaining that to you because you're being either unprofessional, ungenuine, whatever it may be, not providing value. 
I hope that these pillars helped you. Go out and use these in your networking, okay? And expand and grow your contacts, and this will greatly help and increase the chances that you will get an opportunity that you want, okay? With that being said, I wish you guys nothing but health and happiness and good luck moving forward with this, and happy holidays. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.